when the state government announced at the beginning of last year that a new international standard ice sports centre was to be built at Docklands, Victoria's ice skating community was elated. Having secured a prime site and $10 million of state government funding, the project's backers plan to raise the rest of the money from the private sector. But so far the response from investors has been lukewarm and while the developers remain upbeat, some fear the project may never get off the ground. Matthew Stanley reports. Saturday night in Melbourne's southeast suburbs. The stands of the city's only ice skating rink are full for round one of the Australian Ice Hockey League. They're here to see last year's minor premiership winners, the Melbourne Ice, take on the Adelaide Avalanche. Ice hockey barely rates a mention in the sports pages. The National League is now in its fifth year. The local team's success is testament to the players' dedication under trying conditions. The rink they train and play on is small and cramped by league standards, and their one practice session each week begins when most of us are thinking about bed. We get on the ice at 10.15 on a Wednesday. Um, we're, um, we're grateful that we can do that. But it does mean that um, you know, players aren't getting home till after midnight. It's the only time we can get on the ice. It's the same story for anyone involved in ice sports. A small rink means skills can't be practised the way they should be. And finding time to practise at all is difficult. Just a couple of years ago, there were four ice rinks in Victoria. There are now just two. The other is in Bendigo. Victoria used to be a leader in figure skating and that's because they had sessions in the morning, they had plenty of sessions in the evening, lots of opportunities for training and unfortunately we don't have that now so it is reflective in what we produce at our national level. Little wonder then that news the state government had committed money towards a new ice sports centre at Docklands was welcomed as long overdue. But 14 months later the talk has turned to rumours the project's in danger of collapsing. For the first time, we had some support for something other than football, cricket and the mainstream sports. There was $10.5 million ceded to an ice facility. We were all wonderfully, wonderfully happy. But that was a long time ago. Not surprised. Not surprised. We've really been... It's one of these situations we know they've had to get the finance and it's been such a long time coming. The fact that it hasn't happened yet, it, I'm just not surprised. The ice house, as it's already been called, is planned to sit on top of a car park in the sprawling waterfront city development. The developers, ING Real Estate, have already poured reinforced foundations, capable of supporting the additional weight of two international-sized ice rinks. But with a crucial deadline approaching, there's still no investor willing to bankroll the rest of the $50 million project. It's unique, it's different. There isn't a project you can point to immediately like it in the Australian marketplace. Um, and that, of course, gives people some, some reasons for, for caution. The design plan's based on being able to build the ice rink as an extension of the car park construction. To do that, a deal has to be in place by the end of next month. With only eight weeks to go until that deadline, are you not concerned at all that there are no investors on board yet? Uh, I'd be more concerned if the ice house didn't come to Waterfront City. Missing the deadline would add millions of dollars to the cost, making it an even harder sell. And ING won't rule out using the site for something else. You might want to put something else on top of the car park. He might lose this site. He, he, he may, but we're not close. You know, we're, we're getting closer to that date, but, but we certainly haven't made a decision. The ice house is the brainchild of former investment banker Andrew Shelton whose interest in ice sports grew from time working in the United States and Canada. Ice hockey, I think, is a game that Australians would respond to. It's got all the characteristics that they would enjoy. It's physical, it's athletic, it's extremely fast, um, very competitive. He's convinced that a top-class facility would prove a hit on and off the ice. And it's the old chicken and egg. Do you, if you wait till you know you've got the, the skaters and then go build the facilities? His plan has the backing of the Olympic Winter Institute, a creation of the Australian Olympic Committee charged with fostering elite athletes in winter sports. This particular facility will, will house figure skating, speed skating, ice hockey and ice dancing. Now there's four Olympic disciplines. The Institute's
currently little more than a small suite of offices in the back streets of South Melbourne. In return for the right to display the coveted Olympic rings, it's negotiated a new home in Docklands if and when the new centre opens. Winter Olympics elder statesman and institute chairman Jeff Henke believes the centre would give ice sports the room they desperately need to improve and expand. Speed skating, we've qualified for every Olympic Games despite the fact that we don't have the right size rink to train on. It's a bit like in going to track and field where you're going to run 100 metres and you're training on a 70 metre track. The problem, according to those close to the project, is the untested nature of the investment. ING spending $100 million to build a 120 metre high observation wheel at Waterfront City, modelled on the London Eye. By comparison, an ice rink's considered outside its investment guidelines. ING globally, we, we have to look to see where we allocate funds. And, and I guess it's probably similar to a number of other institutions that, that it's not an approved category. Others fear the ice house is too expensive, the vision too grand, and that a design with fewer bells and whistles would have more chance of success. We hope that we get that palace, it will be marvellous. We are somewhat worried that if the Docklands proposal vaporises, doesn't come to fruition, we're going to be left with that middle of the donut, the bit that no one gets. While he won't admit to feeling the pressure, Andrew Shelton concedes that a return on the time, effort and money he's invested to get the project this far now rests on persuading someone with deep pockets to share his vision. It involves a reliance on people feeling comfortable about patronage into the facility. We've done an enormous amount of work and research to, to identify that. And it's really now about finding the right home, the right party that, we'll, that we can bring into this project. There's no shortage of people watching as the clock counts down. If we don't get something else, ice sports in Victoria is going to slowly shrivel and die. And that brings us to the end of State Line for this week. Thanks for joining us.